Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of TC Talk back today with another video. In today's video, it's gonna be a re I'm redoing this video. Um I put I posted out the video like an hour or two ago and I just didn't explain what I was saying properly with the ninja arms and why they're so good. And I kind of want to give a little bit deeper explanation to it um, of why I think they're good and why I think they're going to be a mainstay in the deck. And the only time they're going to be subbed out is in like super aggro matchups. But we'll talk about that in a second. Um, for anyone who's not aware and you hadn't seen the first video, we're going over the weapons and equipment of Fi. My initial impressions on what I think will be like the mainstay weapons and equipment. And then what are some good sideboard options as well as some good budget options for new players out there. So we'll get right into it. I won't dilly dally on it. Um, for the headpiece, it's masculine momentum. Um, if you play Fi and you want to play Fi at a competitive level, you need to play masculine momentum. It's just going to work so well with Fi being, because on a great Fi turn, he's going to be attacking six to nine times a turn, six to eight times a turn. So you're going to be able to threaten that mask trigger multiple times in a turn and just really put a lot of pressure on your opponent. You can run other stuff, um, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but you just need to run it. It's just plain and simple. It's probably the most mainstay card in the deck. At the chest piece, <coughs> excuse me, you're going to want to run Tunic. I still think Tunic's the best option. We get, we're going to talk about the legendary chess piece here in a second and kind of give my thoughts on that, but I still think just overall Tunic's your best option. Um, if you're looking for a budget, you can run Heart and Cross Strap, although... Fi does have a couple two cost uh, power attacks. He has the two for five go again. I think it's called Soaring Strike. It's basically just like Surging Strike except without the effect for combo. Um, and then he has an Immersing Flame Wave, whatever it is. The one that where you can banish a card. Um, but overall, like he doesn't have a lot of two cost cards that are going to be that impactful to where you want to play around them. So I still think Tunic's going to be better. And we'll talk about some other options here in a second. But just that constant one resource is going to be great for Fi. Um, in order to, you know, be able to play out your turns effectively. Because a lot of five swing cards are one cost. And because of that, you're going to want to have that one resource flowing if you can for certain cards, like uh, um, uh, different, just different, different cards. Um, then you have Snapdragon Scalers. Again, there's just not a better feat right now. It's still the best. In, a lot of five good cards are zero and one cost, so it works perfectly with that. Um, it just helps you go wider. There's still not a better leg piece out there. Um, and then for the arms and we'll get, to, or we'll talk about the, the weapon first. So Syrian Ember Blade, I have this in the main board. Um, some people are mentioning Kadachis and talking about the Kadachis and that's fine. Um, I totally understand it. And you can definitely like, you know, talk through why Kadachis could be useful to make five even go wider. The reason I like Syrian Ember Blade and the reason I'm going to run my main board most all the time, the only time I'm bringing Kadachis is for Prism is because, there's so many swing cards that Fi has and even normal cards that Fi has that has to do with draconic chain links, right? Like you have, um, you know, you know, even if I put this down for two seconds, right? And I'll bring up what I put in my last video, right? Oh no, heat wave decided it wanted to be weird. Um, but we have like, like, like for example, like Cinder Skin Devotion. If you control two or more draconic chain links, it gains go again. So if you attack with Kadachis twice and then attack with this, it doesn't have go again because they weren't draconic links, right? Um, you have stuff like, and I don't know why it's doing this. I apologize, y'all. Um, but you have like some of these main cards, right? That just it doesn't. There we go. We got rid of it. So you have, you have, you know, you have. Um, we can look at a couple other cards here really fast. Lava Vein Loyalty. If you control two or more Draconic Chain Links, it gains go again. So if you attack with Kadachis, it won't work, right? Um, Rebellious Rush. This is a thing for Heart and Cross Trap. Uh, you know, there's just a couple other cards in here that have to do with Draconic Chain Links, right? Draconic attacks you control have plus one while their base attack is less than the number of Draconic Chain Links you control. So this will buff Ember Blade, but it will not buff Kadachis. Um... You know, it's just there's a bunch of cards that have to do with Draconic Chain Links. And that's the issue with trying to play Kadachis because it's going to nerf a lot of your cards and really hurt your ability to do what you want to do, right? Um, so that's why I think Ember Blade's the best option, personally, and that's why I would use it. So that's, that's just that. So then we get to the arms equipment, right? So here's how the arms equipment reads. Tiger Stripe Shuko, Ninja Arms, a Legendary, two defense, it's blade break, so if you defend with it once, you're gonna it's gonna break and destroy it. Um, but the second attack action card with two or less base you play each turn gets plus one damage 
and that damage would be, and then that, that it also gains damage that would be dealt by this can't be prevented. So the second attack action card with two or less base, you play each turn. So you have to pay attention. I didn't go over this in the first video. I need to go over it properly. You have to pay attention to how this reads, and this is how I read it. The second attack action card with two or less base. So that means you had to play an attack action card before it that was two or less base, and the second one you play is going to get a plus one and damage that we built this turn can't be prevented. This is going to be nuts and bingy, but we'll talk about that a different day, like I said in the first video. Um, so the second attack action card with two or less base. The reason I think this is good over Stubby Hammers is because it allows you to just run yellows. So, like, for example, like you talk about um, if we do it one more time, if y'all if y'all bear with me, if I pull these cards up again, right? It always does this, and I don't know why. Um, so you have, like, like Cinder Skin Devotion is not one that I would personally do, but any of these that have three power, right? So Spreading Flames, right? That's a Majestic. So I'm trying to think here. I'm trying to go through and kind of give you all a good example. Because I want to give you all a good example of what I mean um with a couple like lava vein loyalty is one right like it's at red and it's three power however because of that arm piece you can run this at yellow and technically lose no attack power because it's going to get a plus one buff and go back up to three just like the red did but now you have a yellow pitch and in this meta that's going to be a lot probably in my opinion a lot of ice a lot of icelander a lot of lexi and a lot of oldheim you might need that extra pitch and if you can have that extra pitch it's really good um you know it'll uh, it'll buff a couple other cards that are just these three power cards at red that will be two at yellow. You'll be able to buff them and play them more. I'm not saying that it's going to be used in every single matchup and you should never take it out and all this other stuff. And, you know, if I made it seem that way, then I apologize. But I think it's going to be really good. And it's a two block. So now you have a ninja that can block for seven. Like this ninja ability can block for seven. Um, And it's just, you know... I think it's just really good. Stubby Hammers is also really good. We'll talk about that in a second. But this would be my main board. This is what I would probably be running initially for the block and for, you know, just the added possible buff. But I can see why Stubby Hammers will be good. It's going to take a lot of testing to see, like, truly which one's better. So going into the side of board equipment for the headpiece, I put Mask of Pouncing Links in here. It's just not going to be as important, but I wanted to bring it up and talk about it. There's not a lot of two base power attacks where I'm going to want to search for them and go get them. Like, they're like swing cards, right? Um, the only swing card that be might be two or less base that I'm trying to think of is maybe in flame because you can go get a Phoenix form after that, right? Um, or Phoenix flame, uh, or I'm trying to think of other two power ones. I can't think off the top of my head, but it's just like, it's not going to be as useful. Um, this was truly a Benji headpiece. It was made for Benji. That's just what it is. Um, and that's, that's just that, um, other headpieces you could run really, you can run other ones that are good for block like Arcanite Skullcap or something, but it, Ninja is meant to run mask momentum. It's just how it is. Um, at the arms, Stubby Hammers is going to be the other one, right? And that's going to be the kind of the contention. Is it going to be the Ninja Legendary or is it going to be Stubby Hammers? It's going to be in the main board. Stubby Hammers is great. A lot of his attacks attack for three. You know, you couple this with like an Art of War and Engulfing Flames, and all of a sudden, all your attacks are getting plus three for the most part. Not all, but a good portion. Um, so it's really good. Heat Wave is amazing for limited and sealed. Uh, I definitely suggest running this. Um, it gives your Phoenix Flames plus one. So you cut you if you couple this with like uh, engulfing or I think it's engulfing flame, emerging flames, where you get the plus one buff on all links that are their power is less than the amount of links you control. Their base power, you know, that basically when you play that card and Heat Wave, all your Phoenix Flames are gonna get plus two, which is super nice um, on top of their plus one effect. So they're gonna be all coming in for three. So it's really nice for that. But Stubby Hammers technically does the same thing. So at chest, I wouldn't run Heart and Cross Strap um, because there's just, like I said, there's not a lot of two power attacks you're really going to care about. Uh, but I think at chest, if you're not going to run Tunic, I would act, and you're not going to run the, the, the legendary chest piece if you don't buy it, like you're looking for a budget option, I'd run Deep Blue. You might have a lot of hands and five that are a lot of reds, and this basically gives you a blue for a red, right? And when you talk about, we'll talk about the legendary chess piece here in a second, but like legendary chess piece reads once per turn instant gain you for one red, you gain a resource for each card that's red in your pitch zone. Activate this ability only if you've played a red card this turn. So if you have three red cards in your, in your or two red cards in your pitch zone, maybe because you've drew into a couple cards from some type of play, um, and then you and then you have to pitch like a blue to then activate the furnace to then gain a resource, it basically acts like Tecla Foundry Heart. But you're jumping through a lot of hoops just to get 
like one resource. And yes, it's a once per turn instant. You can do it at any point, but overall it just doesn't seem too good. Um, and I would honestly rather have the deep blue. The only reason you'd run the chest is for the block. It does have temper two block. So you're gonna be able to block for it for three over the whole course of its, uh, play. And there's probably certain builds in five that it'll work really well, but deep blue is a good budget option for you and something I would definitely look at. And then the final sideboard piece is Tide Flippers. This is going to replace your Null Room Boots. It has Arcane Barrier 1, right? But it also has an attack reaction that says destroy Tide Flippers, target attack action card with two or less base gains. Go again. Um, again, this is really good. You know, it's basically Null Room Boots with a plus up effect. Um, and it's really smart for that. But the biggest point of contention is going to be Stubby Hammers versus the Legendary. I think if you can build your deck correctly, or like, not correctly, it sounds wrong, but build it in the way where it'll take advantage of the legendary equipment. I do think that the legendary equipment is going to be better. Um, gosh, I can't get this to go away. Okay. Legendary equipment's going to be better uh, overall. And I think that I'd rather have the threat of turn to turn damage. Also having two block if I need it, than just one pop off turn with stubby hammers, but I can understand why stubby hammers is going to be good. I can definitely see why it was going to be, it got banned in blitz or it's going to be banned in blitz when the uprising starts makes total sense um yeah hopefully this made sense i wanted to kind of condense it but also going to give reasons like the main reason i say run the ninja arms is because if you construct your deck the way you would want to you can basically run a bunch of yellows instead of reds but still get the same attack power but it just depends on how you construct your deck what cards you value and stuff like that um because a lot of of five swing it or, or key attacks are three or more power so that does make it a little weird and a lot of those are majestics or like one off rares so they don't have a two power version. So I can see how, you know, it would be a little bit of an issue. Um, but yeah, hopefully this made sense. Hopefully you like this. If you already watched this one time, I apologize. I just want to kind of give a little bit more of a, like a, like a general understanding of why I thought the way I thought. Um, and it doesn't hurt too bad. It just went up an hour ago, so it's fine. Um, but yeah, hopefully this made sense. If you like this, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. If not me, go to another creator, uh, do something for them so we can get more people seeing this game. And I'll see y'all next time on TCG Talk. Thank y'all so much.